Second Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should c- come to repentance. Kal halal lehau v'ashem, yehau v'ashai v'ashem, rucha ha kudash. Double honesty, apostles and elders of great millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutation, so brothers on down, teach, preach, pushing this gospel. Good news to four corners of the earth. Waking up the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Greeting also to the few elect ladies and sisters. Tune into these video epistles. Hope you're edified. Built up by the power of truth that's coming out of this book. It's our book, the holy book for the holy people. We're calling the lesson. The end of the grace period is almost here. Repent. The time is running out. And I'm still in here in the, up in the hills. We're in the aftermath of uh, Hurricane uh, Beryl. Just a two and a half weeks today's date. I think it's the uh, was it twenty something or other of uh, of July. We're losing track of time. We have no internet, no service. I haven't seen videos since um, July the third, when the hurricane hit. I have no clue what the brothers are thinking, what they're putting out there. No idea. It's just myself and my book and the Holy Spirit doing what comes to mind. And so we just had this thought here of this grace period going to have a look at that in a moment but let's go straight back to the scripture here oh paul his name is yahweh his only begotten son is yahweh shy and he has a people in the earth the true children of israel we've woken up to who we are our true identity our true power we're calling on those names it's getting everyone really annoyed they hate it that we're waking up they want all the folly to continue with no no end in sight but we can see the end second peter three Let's go from 10 now. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Well, not to his elect, because we're watching. We're on the rooftops. We're watching. We're looking out. We're counting the prophecies. We're saying, well, where are we now? What's happening in terms of the prophecies that's written in this book? The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night to the masses in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the element shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up what's gonna cause all that it's nuclear war intercontinental ballistic missiles they're warming them up they're getting ready seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness what should we be doing what should you be talking about what should you be rehearsing and looking out for Verse 12, looking for and hasting on to the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, we who, the true children of Israel, we call ourselves a hopeful elect. It's the elect of the house of Israel who are watching. They're the ones who are getting ready to be saved or to be a part of that number. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, remember, it's a power that cannot lie, look for new heavens and a new earth. New in the Hebrew kainos, you have refreshing. It's the same earth. It's going to be refreshed. Total refurbishment, total overhaul, a removal of this man. He saw Edom from power, calling himself the white man. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. Wherein dwelleth righteousness. What's the grace period? What do it mean? Well, I can't look it up because I have no internet service to get the exact definition. But we know if you, for example, owe money, you can't pay the money on the due date, you may get a grace period in which time you can, you know, put yourself together, put the money together that you owe. So at a date in the future, two weeks later, three weeks later, you can pay up your debts. But what do we see happening now? What is it a time to run up more debts within the grace period? Of course not. You should be prudent putting aside what you've got, but no. People are running up more debts by way of more multiple sins, iniquity. Let's get that verse. I often try to quote it, mess it up. Let's get this uh, rehearsing the righteous acts in Judges. 5 and 11 they that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water referring to 
being a slave, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. It's all caps, meaning Yahweh. He is he to be the existing one. That's the heavenly father. Even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Yes. Rehearsing the righteous act. Not multiplying sins. Iniquity. No. That's not what you ought to be doing in the grace period. But guess what? The grace period is coming to an end real, real soon. And people are going to get caught out. They're not watching. Folly said in great dignity, you're going to have to get that uh, wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. Just repeat, we get two of them. Let none of us go. Uh, no, reading the wrong one. Yes. Wisdom of Solomon 3, verse 9. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. That's what we're clinging on to. That's what we're embracing. 100% of the truth. We're not putting ourselves in there trying to make something up that fits our narrative. No. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. Just that scripture. I've been reading it a lot recently. John 3 and 27. A man can receive nothing except it be given him from above. See? See? They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints who are Hebrew Israelites. And he hath care for his elect out of the nation of Hebrew Israelites. Get it right. It's not everyone. Mosiah has a people. Was on Solomon 4 and 15, this the people saw and understood it not. Neither laid they up this in their hearts, their minds, that his grace and mercy is with his saints and that he hath respect unto his chosen, the same people. He loves his own. The rest are like the drop of a bucket there by dirt and spit. He doesn't care anything about the other 17 nations. He cares about his elect and he's getting ready to put them back in the place where he wants them. And we're waiting for those promises. His son, Yahweh his name means he is salvation. He's getting ready and he's filling up the rear view mirror of Esau, Edom, this wicked man calling himself the white man. There's no such thing in the scriptures. He's pushing, pushing forward all kind of madness. Let's get the last few scriptures here. I need to keep it short. Equals yes, he's 10. Let's get five. To seven, there is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler and the current ruler who's been put in the earth to rule for this specific period of time is Esau Edom and his head tribe Amalek, the Amalekites. That's the chief of them. These ish people, they own the whole resources of the whole earth is being given into their hands temporarily. And it's getting ready to be snatched away. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceedeth from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity. And the rich sit in a low place. Rich, rich, who's the rich in low places? Let's get that. I have seen servants upon horses. Who's these servants who are riding on horses? It's Esau Edom. A horse meaning that you're in power. You're up and everybody else is down. There's that picture of Theodore Roosevelt with the tribe of uh, uh, Judah on one side and the, uh, the Native American Indian on the other side. The tribe of God putting himself on top there. See, he knows the scriptures, but he is supposed to be a slave. That's what he's made to do, and he's getting ready to go into slavery. The scripture says so. Folly is said in great dignity, and the rich sit in a low place. I have seen the servants. I have seen servants upon horses and princes, the Hebrew Israelites, the elect at this time, walking as servants upon the earth. Let's hold it there. Let's get this rich. What are we rich in? Let's get it. Romans 11, 33, straight to the point. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Most High. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways pass finding out let's read it again read it again love it this is the riches that we have 
and it's about to come to fruition real soon. Romans 11, 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Isaiah 33 and 6. Knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy time and the strength of your salvation. Look what's happening all around us. If I was to move the phone around, you'd see all the devastation of what the hurricane did. The most I just lifted up the trees and just just lay them flat. Some of these trees are massive. Just just pick them up and just threw them aside like, like toys. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Most High. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Give all honor, all glory and praise. The end of the grace period, is, it's almost here. Everyone can feel it. Someone was telling me, obviously, I wasn't able to sit. And somebody took a, a pot shot uh, at, at this clown who's running for a government. They're doing all sorts to stir up the people and get the civil war going. But they're going to get what they're looking for real soon. Let's hold it there for the lesson. The end of the great spirit is almost here. Shalom till the next lesson. We don't fear this man. We fear our power. Yahweh. Bashem. Yahweh Shai.